Hello and welcome. I'm Faisal Qureshi. I'm Afia Salam. Um, the rhetoric is, is, is at its peak once again. The United States seems to be um, tempting fate and tempting Pakistan over and over again. This has happened, this has been going on for what, what six months? Uh, on, a, on a periodic basis, every, every, every few weeks, they try to instigate a war upon Pakistan, which is, which is quite ridiculous. Um, given the fact, in my opinion, that Pakistan has been suffering tremendously in fighting a war for the world, if not, uh, if not specifically for the United States, I think the whole world has fought a war for the United States. Um, given where we are today, it seems very odd that the United States wants our army to engage even further. Um, and the whole debate opens where, why do we have the governments that we do have? Why are we in a, in a geopolitical situation that we are in? Why are we engaged in a war uh, when we didn't really have to be engaged in this war? So if we really get into it, and I, and I, and, and, and I hope what we we're both prepared for this with a lot of flack for this, that I personally feel that we have really had the worst um, of the situation. We definitely have, and it's interesting that you use the word rhetoric. And I think that is a word which people will have an issue with, especially the Americans, because they don't consider it to be just rhetorical, what they are saying. And they are convinced that we are not really in it wholeheartedly, we are not really pulling our socks. Up but actually, this uh, is not rhetoric. Do you think they will follow through? No, that's a different thing. That's a totally different ball game. Now, this carrot and stick approach, like you yourself mentioned, it's been going on longer than the six yeah. months. Six mm -hmm. month period has seen it uh, recurring right. rather more frequently. Mm -hmm. And this is an approach which they have applied even earlier, uh, in the earlier decades. Right. We've had sanctions before when we haven't measured up to their expectations or we have done something which they didn't want us to do like empower ourselves, that's a different debate at whether that works for us right. or not. But the carrot and stick approach that is being applied now and the way it is being tied up to the Haqqani network's presence in Pakistan and the attack in Kabul recently. Mm -hmm. So, th th that's, that's what they pick up. You know, the, the attack in Kabul, that's really insane. I've got these two headlines here. US officials say Pakistan exports violence. Um, and this other headline which says, um, Pakistan backed attacks on U.S. targets. You know what? We, we, we're not really insane. Why would we ever do that? Do, do we want to engage the United States of America in, a, in, in, a, in any kind of a, a battle or a war or a fight? Okay, I'm not looking at it as an engagement for the United States of America, which would be insane or which would be almost impossible for Pakistan to take on. Look at it from the point of view of engaging the Taliban. The mm -hmm. Americans are drawing back. Very good point. So when they leave this area, Pakistan is left to deal with the Taliban or the other militants or a very hostile Afghan government if Pakistan so, takes on these kind of, uh, you know, exercises or so it's, it's, adventurism. So it's not at all in our interest. It doesn't make a sense. You see, when there is a, you see so many of these crime shows, mm -hmm. what is the first thing that they try to uh, determine? The motive. A motive. What is the motive? What benefit does Pakistan get out of? attacking Afghanistan or attacking India. Either way, we are sandwiched in between two hostile neighbors. Why? And we've got problems, you know, everything isn't really very rosy in Pakistan if they hadn't noticed. Thanks. Thank, th thank you, United exactly. States, for that. Yes, that too. That <laughs> That's too. another discussion by itself, though. True. I am not saying that it's only because of United States that we are in this mess. We have, oh, it's me. a mess of our own thank making United as well. Kingdom. Okay. <laughs> yes, history has a lot of role to play here as well. Yeah. But my point is, okay, why would Pakistan do that? But beyond that, tell me something. For the past uh, 11 years now yeah. that uh, mm -hmm. the NATO and ISA forces have been there, mm -hmm. they keep saying it's a porous border and Pakistan, the Pakistani uh, militants are crossing over the border. But you're sitting over there, you're policing that border, you're policing that entire country. Why are you letting any militants in? And the other way around, the, there have been check, uh, Pakistani checkpoints that mm -hmm. have been attacked by Afghans right. recently. Yeah. So where by, have they by been the, coming from? By the from? Americans directly. Americans they directly, directly that's posts. different. But the other, uh, the Afghan uh, yeah. militants have been coming in and attacking our checkposts. Right. So who is policing the border? If those international forces are not able to, they expect a, a force of the Pakistan government, which is spread so thin, absolutely, to do that. 
Okay, give, given that, that, that's one side of the, of the situation. The other side is what, what the United States is trying to shove, in, shove down our throats now, which is an engagement in North Waziristan. Uh, we are definitely not in a position at this time, I think, I'm, I'm not speaking for the, for the military or the state, we're not in a position to take that war on at this time. But interestingly enough, all this rhetoric, once again, from the USA, is, uh, is being directed straight at our armed forces. And, and our elected political governments who are incidentally there only because of our lovely Western friends, because frankly, we weren't elected this lot. So they've been, they've been shoved on us by them, um, are really sitting and just, just enjoying this whole, uh, whole argument. So my point is, what do you expect after in the next weeks, days, or months Will the NATO forces or United States actually engage directly in North Waziristan? I I'm not saying I mean I I can't be a soothsayer. There's no sure. crystal ball over here. Right. But if they do engage, uh, just this little piece of advice from me: please read some history books before you do that. Has anybody who has engaged in that region? I'm not just saying Waziristan, Afghanistan, Waziristan, that entire sure. belt. What have what are the rewards that they have reaped? by engaging those people. Well, explosion of their own unions. Absolutely. I mean, people haven't forgotten that entire British brigade, yeah. was it? Or was it a battalion? Yeah. I'm not good at these things. One person was left alive, so he could uh, go back and tell the tale. Yeah. The mighty Soviet Union, the superpower, where was it dismembered? The union ex in, exploded in, yes, and imploded. In Afghanistan, yeah. in that ragtag country which they say is already in the stone age, so, so what if you are But no one them? has ever bothered, ever managed to conquer them. Because they are not history. the kind of people who are very amenable to foreigners. Okay, even Karzai is a foreigner for them, that's why he can't even get out of uh, Kabul. But the US also needs to realize, that, you know, the whole global forces need to realize that they cannot expect Pakistan to engage uh, blindly in these in these adventures um, it is very easy for an external force to come in fight a fight a war lose and then and then conveniently walk away we cannot afford to do that we are here we have to we have to deal with these things diplomatically politically now all these allegations against us that we are not doing enough to to clamp on these forces to clamp on these um, on, on these terrorists uh, do, do, you know, it's, it's a long debate about ISI, about the army, whether we have been harboring the Haqqani group and all of this. It's a huge debate. But given where we are today, common sense says that it is not in our interest to be doing that. So why do you think we would ever be doing that, if at all? Uh, well, are we doing it? These are exactly. allegations. If at all. These are allegations. And we've had so many. I mean, where is the evidence? And why is it that whenever these allegations are made, when the Pakistan government or Pakistan army and they all say, give us the evidence, we'll go after them. Why is there that never ever provided? We've been hearing of this Quetta Shura for such a long time. How big is Quetta? Okay, in Karachi, if they try to look for a militant, our agencies have picked up those militants. We've handed over so many Al-Qaeda yeah. uh, militants to them. It's like a needle in a haystack in Karachi and yet they pick them up. Quetta is a tiny little town. Do you think they wouldn't have uh, found Quetta Shura if it had been there? In, incidentally, about a week ago in Dubai, we, uh, some of us met Pervez Musharraf. And uh, w one of the journalists asked him that, you know, what do you have to say about drone attacks and what do you have to say about direct intervention? And he, and he said very clearly that all these militants were handed over by us. We got them. And, exactly. the, and the understanding was, you give us the intel, you've got the eyes, you tell us, we will then go and pick people up. Um, so we are fully capable, and not, I'm not at all pro-Musharraf, I'm very anti-Musharraf, in fact. But the fact is, the government sitting in Pakistan right now has been very conveniently placed by them. And if that government is letting them, or letting them down, or letting them engage directly on our soil, then as a Pakistani, I personally have a huge problem with it. Uh, your government, your game, and if you are, I'm sorry, this is where I can say, if you're screwing us, I have a huge problem with it. Besides, you are talking about intel. Now, how credible is that intel is another question. Now, I'm talking about history books in another context. Yeah. But let's just go back, not too far uh, back in history, when this entire war on terror started. Uh, Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden had been blamed for the 9-11 yeah. uh, atrocity. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. 
Then Osama bin Laden was uh, killed in Ahmedabad. Well, really? really? <laughs> Again? The, the boogeyman was caught. And there were WMDs in Iraq, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. big Remember? Ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah, big ones. Yeah. Remember the satellite photos, Colin yeah, Powell? Now he's ashamed of them. Why now? When you, your government up. When you've destroyed they the whole world. Exactly. So, these allegations and the intel and the carrot and stick, somehow it just isn't convincing enough. It just any, isn't. Any, any closing notes? Closing notes is that please read history. <laughs> read history, I would say, or... Um, you know, do not do not assume that just because Pakistan is going through a huge economic crunch, just going through huge po social political problems, security problems, which incidentally are all thanks to you. It is um, it is very clearly advised. Please, please, please. Like Afi said, read history, and I would say, don't engage nations like that. This is this is a new world, and Pakistan is not one of those nations you can just walk all over walk all over and walk out conveniently from. It is a nation which knows how to stand strong. And when it comes to fighting for the soil, we yeah. have written history. So read that one as well. Well, it's been lovely. Thank you very much. Till next time. Thank you.